Hello, David Harper here of the Bionic Turtle, and I would like to just introduce a few terms that we use in probability. And what is probability? One way to say it is that it, that it is the science, the art and science, of drawing an inference about a population based on a sample. And in finance, we do this all of the time. We take historical samples that we hope are representative of something about the population that we can't really know about the population directly. What are the three basic approaches? They are empirical, subjective, and classical. The empirical approach deals with raw numbers. So we can think about a histogram here, which is a chart of the frequencies, and to take a sample and analyze the frequencies of outcomes directly without imposing any distributional assumption or any kind of parametric model would be to take an empirical approach to probabilities. Of course we can take a subjective approach and this would be based on our educated guess, our opinion, some sort of inexact or qualitative view and despite all of the, d despite the importance of quantitative models in finance clearly subjective approaches to probability play a huge role and finally the classical approach which is how oftentimes we're taught probabilities we start to learn it and we could say as I've shown here at the bottom that's where the probability of an event is equal to the number of outcomes in the event divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. And these terms are very specific. Outcomes, event, sample, space. Those have specific meanings in probability. Let's look at a few of these. Here's a learning outcome from last year's FRM that asks us to define the random variable outcome, an event, mutually exclusive events, and exhaustive events. Quite a few terms there, some with subtle differences in meaning. A random variable is at the heart of quantitative finance. It's a function that defines a point in the sample's space of outcomes. So oftentimes we first need to define the function, the random variable, that describes the asset or process that we're trying to uh, quantify. The outcome is a result of a single trial. An event is the result of zero, one, or more outcomes in the sample space. So see the subtle difference there? An event can include no outcomes, one outcome, or several outcomes. An event can therefore be simple if it represents one outcome or compound if it represents multiple outcomes. Mutually exclusive events cannot occur simultaneously. For example, if I flip a coin, one outcome is heads and another outcome is tails. I cannot simultaneously flip a heads and tails. The heads and tails are mutually exclusive. And finally, exhaustive events means that we've described all of the outcomes. And in the example of a coin flip, if I've said I can flip a heads or a tails, not only are they mutually exclusive, heads or tails, no probability of both, but they are also exhaustive events. Heads and tails covers all of the possible outcomes if I flip the coin. And so just to clarify that difference between event and outcomes, I think this is a exa helpful example. Let's assume I'm standing at a craps table in Las Vegas with two die, two six-sided die. And if I roll a 7, if we add the two dice together, if I rolling a 7 is craps, then I have six different ways to do that with two dice. As illustrated here on the right, see I can roll a 1 and a 6, a 2 and a 5, a 3 and a 4, 
a 4 and a 3, a 5 and a 2, a 1 and a 6. There are six different ways for me to roll a 7 or craps. There are six outcomes. Probabilistically, I may only be interested in the 7, which is the one event. But see how regardless of how I get to the 7, there's only the one event of rolling the 7 that I care about. So in this case, rolling the 7 is one event, and we can get there with six different outcomes. This is David Harper of the Bonnock Turtle. I hope that was helpful.